Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored each weekend to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community. We're honored to kick it off with our good friend, Stacy McCall. She's the president and CEO of Service Master by Stratos. Stacy, how are you doing? Doing well, Jeremy. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So you and your team have definitely been on the front lines when you talk about COVID-19. We'll talk about that in a second. But for starters, give listeners a little context. When you talk about Service Master by Stratos, give us a little background for the company. Sure. Service Master by Stratos is a contract janitorial company that services business and industry and schools in the local marketplace in the surrounding area. We have been in the Memphis market for years and are happy to be able to be on the front line serving Memphis and the Memphis community. So when you talk about on your end, um, what you do, I mean, I look at, you know, obviously cleanliness, sanitization. Um, when you talk about what we're dealing with right now, give us a little bit of just how you and your company have been pivoting to make sure that health is kind of top priority when it comes to cleaning the businesses and uh, the different areas that you work in. Jeremy, it's been an interesting pivot in that we are still doing what we always did in creating a clean, healthy work environment or school environment. But in the past, it has been more green in nature until we've been hit with this COVID-19. And then it becomes about disinfecting. And then it becomes about the frequency and where you're disinfecting. And so we have pivoted in that we are really focusing on common areas that have received attention in the past, but now it needs to happen more frequently. And especially as employees are returning to the workplace, there is a sense of security knowing that those high touch points, whether it's light switches, whether it is a doorknob, whether it's a refrigerator in the break room, whether it's the coffee pot handle, the simple things that you might not have thought about before now that you are now thinking about. We try to think before our customers do about where we need to be and the frequency that needs to occur in all of those high touch point areas. And then the disinfectant to use. And one of the big things, Jeremy, that people don't think about is dwell time. So in this whole thing, it used to be you would think, well, I'll disinfect and then I'll immediately wipe. But dwell time is so important. We are teaching our people and our customers in the process of what it really means to disinfect a surface. Define dwell time. What does dwell time mean? It's the length of time a product stays on, in contact with the surface so that it has adequate time to kill the germs that are on the surface. Gotcha. So when we talk about disinfecting a surface, the first thing you have to do is clean the surface. Because when you think about a surface, it cannot have a dust layer or a particle layer on top of it because then the disinfectant doesn't actually touch the surface. So you clean it and then you put the product on the surface. Then you have to let it dwell long enough that it actually kills the germs and then you can wipe it free after that. See, and I not so everything. I learned something new every day. <laughs> and you know, we take that as second nature because of being janitors that we are. And so it's an education process, not only for our customers, but for our service partners too. There's also a difference, I know, because one of the things on your end were different levels, and part of that was if there was a known case versus maybe just a suspect. And so talk about just kind of those two differences. If there's a known case that's been in the building, the level you have to go to on that end versus just making sure that we're kind of keeping things okay. Yes, and the disinfectant is the same for us, but the, the process we go through to, one, protect our people from becoming exposed, and then the, the care that we give the actual facility or the area that has been exposed. But when we talk about personal protection equipment, as we hear a lot of in the news today, our standard was always gloves anyway. 
but now we have masks. Well, then there are different layers of mask or types of masks that you would use in just a preventative or we're coming back into the facility versus known case where the N95 potentially the white suits to make sure there's no covering um, of, of our employees that are touched. So it's that kind of being safe. And it's sort of like what we do um, as a um, just a consumer and as a person in the marketplace. We are teaching our people how to wash their hands carefully, then put on the gloves. We're teaching our people how to not lay items down or touch points. And so it's just like in the community, the best thing you can do to protect yourself and our people protect themselves is proper hygiene and washing those hands in the 20 seconds. So yes, there are, there are different steps that we take when there have been confirmed cases. You're exactly right. How has that shifted for you as the president and CEO? And like you said, talking with your team and making sure that all of these things are now in place to protect the business and make sure that you do a good job, but also to protect your team. I've got to think now there's a lot more layers to the decision-making process of what you're having to go through. You're right, Jeremy. And one of the things that we did is make a shift when we talk about masks. Masks now we're calling uniforms. And that way, when we talk about uh, pro being properly uniformed, that's your mask, your uniform, whether it's your shirt and pants, and so that it becomes just a shift in the mindset. If we just said PPE, personal protection equipment, that sort of sometimes gets lost in white noise, but now we, it was really interesting, Jeremy, when it first happened in March and there were no masks to be found, we had had a, a service partner picnic last year and I had over-ordered bandanas. I thought, you know, why did I over-order this many bandanas? And then God showed me this year while I did. I was able to give bandanas out to all of our people. We watched videos how to use two rubber bands and a bandana and make a mask until we were able to to actually buy them and then have them made for our team members. So it was such a blessing to be able to say, all right, so what we were given last year has now blessed us this year. And it had Service Master by Stratus all over the front of it at the, at the start in March. And so from there, it just progressed. And so now that's just part of our uniform. And that way we teach our people how to protect themselves. And then the funny thing was, our people said, thank you so much because we were able to take something that simple home to our families and we could teach them how to make their own mask. And so not only did it, it bless us in the business, but it blessed them because they were able to share something that they had learned um, in the business with their own family and friends. Talk about shortages because Obviously, masks being one of them, which, you know, I love that story of, hey, I bought it last year. and Wait a second. This is perfect. I'm blessed we can use it this year. But also, too, I love that when it comes to things like toilet paper, you were able to stock up on that, but then allow your team to have access to that and be able to help. But I'm curious, outside of things like that, have there been shortages or do you have to over prepare for things like the... Um, the proper resources in terms of the sanitization, the, the liquids, the, all of the chemicals, I mean, those kind of things as well. How, how has that been on the business side? Oh, yes, that it has been really interesting. Our asset manager is constantly checking back orders and everything because, it, as you know, the United States, a lot of countries were behind the curve and supplies are being diverted where they need to be diverted for our healthcare system so that they have proper gloves and coverings and their mask and everything. So we have really had to think ahead and constantly stay stocked. And you use the example of the toilet paper. For some reason, I couldn't buy toilet paper on the shelf in the grocery store like the rest of the community, but we were able to order through our suppliers on the commercial. And you can't imagine how elated we were when we could find two-ply commercial. Our people were really excited about that. And so we were able to make that available to our people so that that was one less thing 
that they had to worry about in their home so that they could focus on taking care of our customer and their facilities. But whether it's the disinfectant, whether it is now, the discussions are coming about gloves and the shortages of gloves that we may be seeing as the year progresses. So we're having to think about how we're going to do that. Are we going to use disposable? Now are we going to use the reusable? And so, yes, we are constantly in the mode of thinking about what we see on the horizon because we've got to, at all costs, make sure that we're providing our people what they need to protect themselves and provide the service our customer expects from us. Share maybe one lesson or something that you've learned through this so far. What, what's something that when you look at all the, the roller coaster ride that we've been on, what's something that you've taken away as a lesson learned? You know, Jeremy, one of the things that we all talk about now is technology. Zoom meetings and all of the teleconferencing and the telemedicine and everything. We had for years been trying to focus on being uh, front of the curve or head of the curve on technology and our particular industry. Well, we had the technology in place, but we hadn't had everybody buy into it. Well, when the pandemic hit, it was mandated. You just had to at that particular time. So what our team has gone through in their learning process is I didn't have to create anything new. We just had to learn how to use what we already had to the, the fullest extent. And I think that our team has learned that we can be brilliant at the basics, like Mayor Strickland says, and it benefits the entire team and the company is better for it in the end. So we are real excited about the final embracing of the technology in our business for us to actually know what's occurring in the front line and throughout the business. What gives you encouragement? Many small businesses have really struggled through this, having to furlough employees and close their doors. And obviously it's been very, very difficult for everyone, both on the job side and the business side. I know that a big line of your business is events and sporting events and things like that, which obviously those have uh, unfortunately not been able to, to happen. So you've seen that hit firsthand, but what gives you encouragement for the future and getting beyond this and getting back to something sort of normal? What, what, what gives you encouragement through this? So, Jeremy, in our business, we're a logistical people business, so it's all about our people. The sweet spirit that our people have had through this whole pandemic. Now, we, we like everybody else, um, struggle with mental health issues because of all that is occurring inside our homes and outside in the marketplace and the unknown, but it's the resiliency uh, that I have seen within the organization for our people and how appreciative and how much they, they are willing to serve others. And our people, they have some sweet, sweet stories. One of our service partners said, I even feel like a hero because people are thanking me for the job that I'm doing. So at times our people have felt like they've been invisible or ghosts. And now they are receiving the recognition and understand the connection of how valuable they are in the marketplace to keep our workplaces clean, safe, and healthy. So that's what keeps us going every day is that our people feel empowered and they are ready to serve. And I am looking forward to um, us coming out on the other end of that. But I think that Service Master by Stratus is, is better for it in the end. So wrap up and talk about contact information, where people can go to learn more about Service Master by Stratos, but also too can reach out and kind of get your guidance on, okay, how do we take a look at our facility, our building, our office, our operations to have you come in and really make sure that their team is safe? 
Well, thank you, Jeremy. And yes, we want to be a resource for um, businesses in the community. And so they can reach us through our local number, 901-683-0064. They can go on our website, www.smbystratos.com. And then you can find me on LinkedIn, if you want to type in my name on LinkedIn, and then we're also on Facebook. So reach out to us. No question is a dumb question. And we've got little vignettes that we're starting to put out about dwell time. And we have one out there that explains disinfectants and dwell times. And now we're putting one out that just talks about how to play a role in coming back to the workplace. That's just so that we can be a resource because we do this day in and day out and we know others don't. And so we'll be glad to share. And if you want more information, we welcome the call or email. Well, Stacy McCall, thank you for all you and your team do. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Take care and be blessed.